Well, here we are. Back at the fateful choice that de determines which ending you get in the game for Amane's route. We got the good ending purely by accident. I don't look up the ending, so I don't know what choices lead to which end. We ran away with Amane. We didn't want to abandon her again. So now we're going to choose the other option. What has fate foretold for us? Find out right now. Now you may notice that the text is a little gray. Well, <laughs> I was in the recording and my recording got botched, but it's okay. I didn't get too far into it. We're in no position to have a debate about this. Amane, please, try to understand. This is the only thing we can do right now. It's the strategy that leaves us the highest possibility of surviving. Okay, good girl. I'll be the decoy and run to the right. You break in the opposite direction once he follows. Got it? <laughs> break time's over. Give running, huh? The man's got no patience. <clears throat> Listen to me, Amane. Focus on keeping yourself alive. Don't even think about giving up. I'm not Kazuki. I'm gonna survive this, and I'm gonna hold you in my arms again. The only thing you need to do is believe in me and run, understand? Run? I've been running for a very long time. From so many things. I ran away from this mountain, deserting my friends. I ran away from those bl who blamed me, hiding myself from their eyes. I ran away from my own guilty conscience, using Yuji as my refuge. If Yuji thinks he can protect me by pretending to flee, I can do the same for him. No matter what, I'll never run again. For time, this time is my turn. I'll get Yuji out of here alive. But to achieve that, I need a way to fight back. I need a weapon. <laughs> that said, we left all our luggage back at the monument. And even then, we hadn't packed anything that might serve as a weapon. A rock or a tree branch off the ground would probably be more effective. What do I do? As I move my hand through the pockets of my jeans in search of anything useful, my fingertips brush against a folded sheet of paper. <laughs> the memo Kazuki left me six years ago. And on the final page, there was a roughly sketched map to the hidden stash we were planning to unearth. Kazuki. Yeah, we never did unearth that in the good ending. It's kind of strange that they leave after this one. What did Kazuki leave behind for me? When I was in trouble, Kazuki would always save me. For some reason, I feel like she's going to help me one last time. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I can understand how Captain Sakashita's father feels. Sometimes the pain of losing someone you love can prove simply unendurable. And rationally, he knew that it was nothing but a cruel accident. For a while he accepted that, but I understand why he came to despise me, the one and only survivor of that nightmare. Why did I survive? Why not his daughter? What was so different about us that our fates had diverged so sharply? It's no surprise that he might conclude I was a coward, a traitor, a monster. It was the most comforting possible interpretation, maybe the only one he could bear to accept. That comforting bitterness slowly twisted his thoughts until, at last, Suemane murdered my daughter became his truth. For six years, that hatred built up in a dark corner of his mind, fed by misery and pain, giving no outlet, no release. With the spark of my classmate's message, it must have simply exploded. Unable to endure the overwhelming sorrow of his daughter's death, he transformed it all into hatred against me. That powerful anger gave him the strength to crawl up from the depths of despair. Just as I used Yuji to bury my pain, that man found his refuge in his loathing for me. I understand. I, I really truly do. All too well. But even so... <laughs> After reaching the spot indicated on Akazuki's map, I begin to dig into the earth using a tree branch. Every time I thrust under the rocky ground, the rough branch pierces my palm with its painful splinters. Even so, I push it into the earth again and again, begging for help. Kazuki, 
The stash isn't buried as deeply as I'd expected. Soon enough, a dirty blue cooler emerges from the earth. This was something that had belonged to the basketball club. We'd searched the overturned bus high and low for it, but never found it. We'd ended up deciding it must have gone flying out of a window as we tumbled down the cliff, but... After six years buried beneath the earth, the words Takazono Private Academy Base Basketball Club that we'd written on the side in permanent marker have faded to an illegible smudge. But other than that, the plastic box doesn't seem to have been damaged. What's in the box, I wonder? I snap open the buckles that were locking the cooler's lid in place and gently swing it open. Inside, I find a large quantity of dirty water that must have leaked through the cracks in the lid, a single kitchen knife, and a plastic Tupperware container. Other than that, there's nothing but soggy garbage decayed beyond recognition by years of hydrolysis. I remember it well. This is the knife I pointed at my neck on that day. The knife Kazuki gently took from my shaking hands. Why is this here? Well, whatever the case, I have a weapon now. The only other item that hasn't rotted away to nothing is the opaque white piece of Tupperware. When I take a damp plastic container in my hand and give it a tentative shake, something inside makes a dry rustling sound. Offering a silent prayer to nothing in particular, I slowly peel off the lid. By now the half fused of the container below, inside, there's a folded sheet of white notebook paper. Letter. With trembling hands, I unfold the letter and begin to read. To my dear best friend, Suamane. First of all, congratulations on getting out alive. If you're reading this letter, I expect several years have passed since the accident, and you're finally beginning to calm down and face up to what occurred here. I'm sure you open this box in search of answers and explanation of the events after your escape. Therefore, I will now give you the executive summary. Everyone died from illness. Surprise? Well, I should think so. Very well then, I'll give you a short rundown of the particulars. The trigger of these events, and that is to say the ultimate cause of her deaths, was eating the improperly prepared meat of Haruka-san. Haruka had spent the last two weeks of her life lying in her sick bed with fractured legs. Owing to the unsanitary conditions and her severe vitamin deficiencies, she ultimately began to suffer from severe skin diseases. You remember this, I assume. In addition, her immune system had been weakened badly by a number of factors, including her advanced malnutrition and irregular exer bacterial toxins built up heavily within her body, directly leading to her death. If we'd cremated Ruka-san's remains immediately afterwards, there likely wouldn't have been any danger whatsoever. But incinerating a human corpse requires considerable thermal power, and we'd used up our supply of gasoline rendering a fire of the requisite temperature beyond our means. Well, I suppose there was nothing anyone could have done about that. In any case, as a result of consuming that contaminated meat, there was an abrupt outbreak of acute internal disease. Symptoms include shivers, vertigo, fatigue, as well as diarrhea and dehydration that accompanied it. Within two to four days of sickening, nearly all were dead. Of course, since you never ate the meat in question, you were spared this fate. You still remember what Haruka-san said to you that day, near the end, as you nursed her at her deathbed? Susan, I'll repay your kindness someday. Even if I die, I'll never ever forget this. She kept that final promise, I believe, albeit in a form I'm sure you never expected. The one who truly saved your life might as well have been Haruka-san. But I know your gentle heart. I'm sure you're giving all the credit to your dear friend Kazami Kazuki, who offered up her body to protect you. I'm sure you've offered me many tearful thanks. Therefore, I've got a favor to ask of you. If my little brother has lost its way, if he's suffering alone, I want you to find him and help him. My Yuji's a cowardly little crybaby. His kindness is it. About always just going for him. A bit of a hopeless boy, really. Even so, he's my one and only brother. And I love him very much. Leaving him is my only regret. If 
Yuji happens to be standing next to you as you read this. He's a very fortunate young man. He needs a reliable woman by his side. He's a sort of can't manage anything alone. If possible, I'd like you to watch over my little brother forever. Well then, as long as we're both alive, let's meet again somewhere, someday. Respectfully yours, the greatest friend of your life, Kazami Kazuki. P.S. If by some chance you currently find yourself in a life or death situation, take the attached kitchen knife and please do your best to eliminate the threat by your own power. I will no longer save you. Believe it a happier tomorrow. If necessary, fight for it. I firmly believe that you're capable of blazing your own path forward. <laughs> what does this mean? In the end? What happened to Kazuki? I mean, when did she even write this? Hey, are you alive or are you dead? Which is it, Kazuki? And how could she possibly know my situation this precisely? Was she even human? Monster feels a lot more convincing right now. I have no idea when she wrote this letter or why. But there's one thing and one thing I only understand very clearly. I understand, Kazuki. Your wish has always been my command. に私が守るから。絶対だよ。Shut the hell up already. Seriously, give me a damn break here. He may be bad shit, but the man's still a hell of a hunter. He's playing with me. It's unbelievably frustrated to know that, but there's nothing I can do about it. Whenever I slow my pace to try and observe his approach, a gunshot instantly rings out, bursting apart a tree a few feet ahead and showering me into sharp fragments of wood. I've been looking to take advantage of the reload time required after every two shots, but he's been reloading after every blast. Always leaving at least one bullet loaded as insurance against a counterattack. Normally, dropping low and crawling concealed along the muddy ground might be the better plan, but it wouldn't do much good here. You guys got a shotgun. Even a haphazard shot in my general direction has a good chance of hitting me. Given the smallest opening, I could take measures to fight back directly, but after every shot, Sakashita melts back into the thick green forest. He's slowly, methodically pushing me into a corner without the briefest moments of clearlessness. Feels like I'm a boxer getting a kick to the face every time I try to pull myself up off the canvas. He's not letting me do a thing. Bastard. This seems about the most I can do. Helps with the stress, but very little else. Since drawing Sakashi's attention, I've been grazed by the shotgun's blast numerous times. By now I'm covered in fresh gunshot wounds, bleeding copiously and drawing breath and wheezing gasps. My vision's beginning to grow dim. Hi! Dong! Ashi! Utte! Ah. The latest barrage of lethal pellets grazes my right thigh, knocking it violently forward with an impact like a powerful low kick. Pitch forward, crashing to the ground. Ah. Unable even to control my fall, I clumsily smash into the rocky soil. Raising my head, I spit out the gravel and dirt that plunged into my mouth. But that's the most I can manage. I can no longer rise to my feet. God damn it, I'm not your toy, old man. Sakashita's scheme was completely transparent. He's purposely toying with me, tormenting me at length in an attempt to lure out Amane. The man emerges from the woods and advances slowly, staring down at me as he cracks open his shotgun. Ejecting the shell he fired, he retrieves another from the pouch around his waist and pushes it into the barrel. しかしあの女、あなたを見捨ててまた一人で逃げましたね。最低の苦悩女ですよ。どうして皆さんあんな運行女をかばうんですかね。I don't offer an answer to his question. No. Marco, I don't have the composure necessary to answer. 
I crawl forward on the uneven ground. Every breath I take a gasp. Every frantic beat of my heart sending more blood spurting out of my wounds. Shut the fuck up. No one asked for your opinion on my woman. I'll kill you, asshole. It's the last thing I do. Yet another gunshot wound. This time grazing my thigh and my left leg. It's clearly not a direct hit, but as he fired from point blank range, the impact still knocks my leg violently into the air. It feels hot more than anything else, but that probably just means my sense of pain is beginning to shut down. Shut up. Don't call a woman in the middle of a one-on-one fight. But even as he sneers down at me, Sakashita methodologically reloads the single shell he's fired, remaining fully alert. Honey, stay away, you got that. You don't need to come back. I'll take him to hell by myself. Shit. Stand up. You're gonna stand up, Yuji. You weren't trained gently enough to go down this easy, were you? Grr. <laughs> For her sake, obviously. If your daughter's life was on the line, you'd go this far yourself, wouldn't you? <laughs> Don't be an idiot. I'm off the clock right now. I've got no intention of dying like a dog for anything other than my country. I was finally gonna have a family of my own. If I die for her, no matter how or where, it'll never be a dog's death. ご先は楽器の綺麗事ですね。がっかりですよ。だってそうでしょ。あの I gave her a strict order to stay away. She's a well-behaved, understanding woman. あいあいそうですか。わかりましたよ。あなたを餌にしてあのクソ虫女を釣ろうとしていたわけですが、無駄でしたね。残念です。すみませんね、風見さん。こんなくだらんちゃばんに付き合わせてしまって。<laughs> Out of fact, <laughs> much obliged for your trouble. Better make sure you do it right, though. If I survive this, it's your turn. Ah, Shit. What the hell? That's it? After all that big talk, this is all I've got? Pretty lame. But Amane got away. This isn't a meaningless death. That's good enough, right? In that instant, the sound of branches snapping, bushes rustling. Don't tell me. 
Lifting myself off off my back, I turn and look over my shoulder to find my fears confirmed. The money rushes forward through the forest, a gleaming kitchen knife somehow clutched at her waist, screaming a fierce war cry. <coughs> Charging forward on a collision course with Sakashita, gripping her knife tightly at the hip with two white knuckled hands, Suamane is the very picture of a wrathful demon. The sheer bloody determination and hate in her eyes would make any who see them recall the words, Death Before Surrender. <laughs> Sakashita, momentarily overwhelmed by Amane's spirit, flinches slightly before moving to aim the shotgun in his hands. Not missing her chance, Amane lowers her body and closes the last few meters in an instant. Ramming her shoulder to Sakashita's left flank, she swings the knife sheltered at her side up toward his gut. Twisting her waist forward to thrust, she stabs the blade home with all of her strength. <laughs> Amane! It was a beautiful thrust, as forceful and sudden as a flash of lightning. Why? Why did you come back? You utter idiot. Mana leans forward, pushing all of her body weight into the knife, twisting it in a vicious circles to enlarge the wound. In the next instant, she's blown backward by a point-blank blast from Sakashita's shotgun. Tossed through the air like a doll by the impact, a cloud of scorched blood and pulverized flesh scatters from Amani's stomach. Snarling with rage, Sakashita readies his gun for a second shot. <laughs> Amane! A burning red haze fills my mind. Somehow I'm pulling myself up out of a pool of my own blood. Somehow I'm staggering forward. Sak sorry, staggering toward Sakashita, but slowly. So very slowly. Even in my shock and agony and fury, I understand with painful clarity that I'm moving in slow motion. <laughs> At the instant, the muzzle of Sakashi's gun aligns with his line of sight. I realize that he's drawn a bead on my head, and instantly twist my body to the side. <laughs> the lower barrel of the shotgun flashes a brilliant red. The pellets tear past my head, taking most of my left ear with them. The scorching gas hits me full in the face, scalding my open left eye. Ugh. Even so, I lunge forward blindingly, grappling with Sakashita, my hands seeking his throat. <laughs> Sakashita swings his shotgun like a club, solidly catching the side of my head with a jarring crunch. My violently concussed brain loses all sense of balance and I crumble to the ground. <gasps> どいつもこいつも <笑>こいつ、<笑> I'm roused from my half conscious days by the sound of Sakashita's insane laughter. <laughs> I'm not. Nay. Ha ha! Yo! 
風見さんよ生きててくれたかこいつはラッキーだ待ってな今このクソ虫女の目の前でぐっちゃんぐっちゃんのバラッバラに吹き飛ばしてやんよえっ、ー、Once again he turns his gun to me training the barrels on my head and this time I can't move an inch End of the line, huh? No. Not yet. If nothing else, I've got to save Amane. If I can't do that, I'll really die a useless, meaningless dog death like a dog I've always been. Up until now, I've haven't done a single worthwhile thing in my entire pathetic excuse for a life. At the end, just once. I want to protect someone I love. And to go to hell with my head held high. I'm not giving up yet. Come on, Sakashita. I'll glare you to death. My scorched left eyes glued shut, but with a fierce effort of will, I force my right wide open and take in an unbelievable scene. ふざけた。話せ、クソ虫が。犬かてめえ。クソ。違う。ぐわわ。いて。このクソバカ女、話せっつってんだろうが。<笑> <話す。文句。笑> 気持ち悪いって言ってんだよ、ほら。話せって言ってんだろうが。絶対に話す文句。せめて腕の一本ぐらいは道連れにしてやる。あんたの腕は私が食いちぎって地獄まで持っていてやる。ざけな。なめんじゃねえぞ、オラ。でも、一人で逃げ出すのは嫌なのよ。一人で生き残ったって、いいことなんて何もない。苦しいだけだよ。それに、カズキと約束したんだよ。ユージだけは絶対に守る
I'd give you a hand of applause if I could, no matter what anyone says. You're the best woman in the whole damn world, bar none. You can run on ahead with that armor sack of Sheetus. I'll take care of the rest. Not to worry, I'll catch up to you soon. Just sit on your heels and wait. どいつ while seeing Sakashita's face twist in cruel pleasure through my one functioning eye, listening to his indifferent, strangely flat words with my one intact ear, a strange calm wells up within me. It's not that I've given into despair. It's just that, for some reason, there's only one thought in my mind. A warm, wistful, silly thought, utterly out of place in this cold world. I want to eat her cooking just one more time. And right now, nothing else seems to matter. Pushing two shells into his shotgun with an air of finality, Sakashita tries to take a step toward me. Instead, he jerks to a halt and furrows his brow in confusion. I follow Sakashita's gaze towards the ground. Once again, we confront the unbelievable. Amane collapsed limply at Sakashita's feet, has firmly locked her right hand around his booted ankle. The color drained from his face, Sakashita quickly tries to shake his leg free, but Amani's grip doesn't falter in the slightest. Sakashita gibbers madly, his teeth chattering audibly in his mouth. Bringing his shotgun to bear to Amani's body, he fires a shot point blank into her back. But her clutching hand doesn't even twitch. She's dead. She's been dead. But even in death, she won't release her grip. I see. I see how it is, Amani. One arm wasn't enough for you, eh? <laughs> Greedy woman. You'll never change. <laughs> With my sudden burst of laughter, the last slender thread holding Sakashita to something resembling sanity snaps. Somehow gulping in great mouthfuls of air, even as he shrieks, Sakashita kicks his leg frantically into the air, staring with goggling eyes at Amani's white hand, fighting its implacable grip to no avail. Terrifying. Truly terrifying. Is this what human hatred can be? A thing that takes on a life of its own? A spirit that grows only fiercer in death? The thing clutching Sakashi's ankle is no longer Amane. It's death itself, taking Amane's form. Desperate to shake off that cold hand, Sakashi kicks violently into the air one final time and loses his balance. Tumbling hard to the rocky ground as if dragged down by him on his body, his head strikes a boulder with a wet crack. With a strange little shriek, Sakashita stops moving. Ignoring him, I begin to crawl my way across the ground through the slippery blood that coats the harsh earth. I drag myself to Amane. Amane? Amane. Somehow reaching her last, I pull myself to my knees and raise her body from the ground. I look down into her face. After so many vicious blows, nothing but a swollen mass of shattered bones. Her mouth, her ruined mouth full of broken teeth, is smiling contentedly in death. Staring into the face of a woman who fought to the death and beyond, a cold emptiness floods my heart. 
the hell are you grinning for, woman? There wasn't a single damn thing in your life worth smiling about. If you didn't notice, I was trying to give you something to live for. You. We were still... We were still just getting started. How many damn times did I tell you you weren't allowed to die? There wasn't a single good reason for you to die here. You complete and utter idiot. Even so, Amani died protecting the life of someone she loved. And maybe that was enough for her. Maybe that was what she'd wanted all along. But whatever the case... Amani, you died a worthy death. As a human being. Amani, well done. I'm glad I fell in love with you. I really mean that. When you told me you wanted to take Kazuki's place, I scolded you. I told you there was only one Kazuki, that no one could ever replace her. But the thing is, it's true for you as well. Always has been. No one could ever take your place. To me, you are the one and only. The greatest damn woman in the world. <laughs> well then, what do you know, Sakashita-san? It seems I've survived. Hey, do you remember what I told you just a little while ago? That's right. I spelled it out for you, didn't I? If I survive this, it's your turn. Remember that? Sorry to keep you waiting. It just slipped my mind for a moment there. It's your turn now. I gently pulled the shotgun out of Sakashita's unconscious hands. I haven't been... So I can't speak from experience, but... I might not be so bad once you get used to it, you know? Well, you head along first and send me back a postcard. I'm sure your daughter's waiting for you on the other side. Once again, I failed. Once again, I couldn't protect anyone. If only I could turn back time, I'd, I'd all be different. Just one more chance, and I'd pull it off beautifully. Once again, the weight of a woman's death settles on my shoulders. Once again, I'm alone. Holding Amane's battered, cold body in my arms, I stare quietly up into the sky. There's nothing above me. Nothing but a single curling column of gunpowder smoke rising silently up into the void. That ending was sad. But I strangely kind of enjoyed it in a way, you know? It, it had kind of resolution, I mean... Amani didn't survive, but she didn't die in vain. Yuji lived on, and yeah, he was alone, but... You know, that's, that's why they call it a bad ending, I guess. There's got to be some sort of consequence. Well, there you go. There's the other ending, and... Uh, I think a little surprise for y'all is I'm, I think I'm going to go do Sachi's route next in the game because I love Sachi. She's adorable, and I I have to know... What's the what's her past like? You know, what's the story behind the maid uniform? And with that, I'm going to leave you off here. The video's gone on long enough, so, you know, I'll see you next time on The Fruit of Grisaiya. And if you haven't yet, check out the sequel, The Labyrinth of Grisaiya, which details more about Yuji's past and how he became the man he is today. So, well, that's it, I guess. So, take it easy, everybody, and have a nice day.